Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second National Wheelchair, Wheelchair Summit. Uh, my name's Helen Bevan, and I'm the facilitator for today. Um, I work as part of NHS Improving Quality, which is the national improvement body for Im improvement in England. And um, with other colleagues, I've been really um, thrilled to, to plan this day. So what we want to do to start with is we just want to show you a film that I think takes us to the absolute heart of why we're all here today. So um, roll the movie. chairs my independence it means that I can live on my own I can now actually do things that are important to me I can be more independent I can play sport and it's, it's a simple equation it's, it's not rocket science I'm choosing to use my energy for the things that I'm enjoying and it's meant that the quality of my life is so much more improved Selecting a product for somebody that's got complex and changing needs is really important. It's very easy to um, see somebody as they walk through the door and just provide a product for them at that moment in time. Looking at what somebody needs in the future at the point of provision is really important. She's uh, reliant on us or a carer for everything and the important thing in her life is um, her wheelchair. She got her wheelchair. She doesn't go anywhere, she can't see anyone, she can't do anything. Um, so she needs her wheels, that's important. I would be trapped very quickly if I had only a manual chair. My power chair it really makes a huge difference. It gives me total independence outside, outside the building. I mean, given, given my prognosis, given the fact that I'm not around indefinitely, and that I'm going to get weaker, it seems even more important that I should be given what I need while I need it, while I'm able to use it. Not have to wait for it, not have to beg for it, not have to apologise for needing it. Um, Nathan was n never going to walk. Um, his disability mean, meant that he was always going to need a wheelchair. When we used the wheelchair service initially, so to get his first wheelchair, the service was excellent. Um, things changed when Nathan was older and we, uh, we waited for a second wheelchair and it was obvious that there wasn't the ready funds for wheelchair services. We were warned that he would wait four to six months for a new wheelchair. spine surgery, um, she had to wait almost eight weeks before she had the proper chair to support her new posture, but in that time she was just in almost a bog standard chair with cushions supporting her, um, so by the time she was fitted in a good chair her hips had started to change position again. As Nathan was growing up I was thinking about maybe privately funding a wheelchair because of the types of chair that you get in the NHS. I'm very high when I'm sitting in the power chair, even when it's at its lowest height. If I go to a cafe, I go to a restaurant, very often I can't get my legs under the table and I, I need to put a tray on me or something like that. I'm almost, you know, it's almost like having a high chair or something. Yeah, trying to sit together at the dinner table, it's um, a bit like Christmas dinner every day because poor Ellie is the one who's sitting on the piano stool at the, uh, at the end of the table because her chair can't fit under the table. It just highlights that there's the disabled person at the end of the table, so it's, it, it doesn't feel like a family. 
thinking about wheelchairs across different settings is really important because an assessment might occur for a wheelchair for use in the community but nobody's thought about access issues in a school environment or access into and out of the home and what needs to be adjusted to make that better. I've been very fortunate that really um, the team who have been helping me um, the, the MND team at my local hospital um, have really focused a great deal on my needs. They've really worked together in order to try and make sure that as the changes happen to me, they're thinking proactively of what needs to happen, what needs to change. When I'm at an adult height level, I find that the quality of my interactions with, with everybody is completely different. I'm seeing people eye to eye. There's a level of communication and a level of respect. As soon as I go down, it's almost like putting on short trousers. It's almost like becoming a kid again. Another issue we have is the height of the handlebars and the width of them. So you feel the strain going up your forearm, like RSI shooting up your forearms, if you're pushing for a long time. At, at the NHS wheelchair unit, I was never given a choice of the chair that we were offered. It was, this is the chair that is suitable for Nathan. It seems to be that the chair fits the person, not that they look at the person and see which chair best fits to suit that individual person's needs. The difference it makes to me, having such a great service that if I've got a concern about seating, I can speak to them before a mark on my skin becomes a pressure sore, which then costs the NHS even more money. We have formed an interagency strategic partnership where we have got the right people around a table. Absolutely pivotal to that arrangement working is having parent carer input. The manufacturers and the technicians are very passionate about their product, which is lovely, but they're looking at what that product can give um, that person in building the seating and postural part, but not in every day. Um, it's been difficult getting the chair that you need at the time you need it, purely because you're waiting so long between assessment um, and then you wait for a fitting appointment. And once you've had a fitting appointment, then you've got maybe another six or eight weeks before you actually have the chair. We got our private wheelchair. Initially, it was really good. We were really pleased with it. And they absolutely loved it. In the past, when we had an NHS wheelchair, we could ring up the unit and the wheelchair unit would book us an appointment and we would go in. Things, the problems would be sorted. We don't have that fallback with the private wheelchair. So for the last year... Nathan has had a chair that has been not fit for purpose, which has um, had detrimental effect on his posture. I'm fortunate. I've got a number of people who provide my wheelchair services who will work together. They will take advice from outside organisations. They'll talk with me, they'll talk with my carers' needs, uh, my teammates' needs throw them in a box, shake it up, and let's come out with a solution together. Um, it's really important for Ellie that she has a multi chair. Without the right chair, uh, it's, it affects her posture severely. So if she's doing a grace strut and the chair's not supporting her correctly, it can deform her posture. What's important is that Wheelchair service providers need to start thinking outside the box. That if you have a customer who has specific needs and you haven't got that piece of equipment, don't try and bend the person to fit the equipment. Find the equipment to suit the person. Typically, reasons why communication doesn't work sometimes with people is that you have professionals going into a situation and doing their bit and not necessarily looking at the whole picture. I'm sure that manufacturers could improve the chairs. 
the chair I'm in is, is brilliant and it has a, it ha is what they call mid-wheel drive. So that means it can turn on a circle, but actually it has a very big footprint. Manufacturers need to look at making them smaller, making them lighter, making them have a smaller footprint. And they also need to look at incorporating technology into them. Why can't I have a charger on my wheelchair, a little USB port that will plug into my phone and allow it to charge while I'm in there? I'd just like to see the manufacturers maybe go and see someone in a home, in, in their home environment with the chair. You know, like they say, walk, walk a mile in that person's shoes. So have a go manoeuvring someone and, and taking them for a day and getting them indoors and outdoors and having dinner and just see how your amazing chair is it that amazing. I think people should stop being ashamed of being wheelchair users, which might seem a very strange thing to say, but they need to take the apology out of it. You're a person first. Um, stop apologising for being a wheelchair user. You have a right to a life.